Hey everyone of YouTube, it's Godzilla Games back again, and today I'm going to be doing a brand new series, what I like to call a craft guide to mutants and masterminds. I'm going to be sitting here and walking you through it. So today we're going to be talking about tank characters, the big bad toughies, the person who take a lot of damage and make sure they continue on anywhere from melee to range to even affliction based ones over here. And we're going to be taking it slowly so you understand. First of all, what is a tank in Mutants and Masterminds? Simply put, a tank character in Mutants and Masterminds is meant to take a lot of damage, and is meant to at least try to close a distance in order for them if they are melee, but if they are ranged, they're meant to just take a lot of damage. Simply put, if you have a sword, you need to get close to your enemy to hit them. If you have a gun, you have to go ahead and hit them at a range. Good. Now, what do all tanks have that they're shared amongst them? And I'm going to be spinning you up some builds here. One, tanks always have high toughness. The highest toughness you can take at your power level is what your tank is going to have. You need to have at least one dodge and one parry in order for your character not to be critted. Now, let's continue here. Let's talk about the specialized, specialized tanks over here. Let's go with the tank I'm most familiar with, the melee tank. What they like to do is they like to get close. Sometimes some, sometimes they get close by a multiple, multitude of means. Sometimes they get close by teleporting to you. Sometimes they get close by permeating to you, by going through the ground. Sometimes they burrow under the ground and come to you. Sometimes they fly and then hit you over the head. And sometimes they slowly waltz their way over and attempt to hit you. Either way, the melee tank build is meant, a melee tank build is meant to take a giant sword club axe Club, axe, machete, your, 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 the local pole inside the street. I don't know. <laughs> what, 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 whatever you want to do and whack them over the head with it. Simple and easy. Most builds are going to be using a balance build. Balance to hit, balance damage. Simply put, 8 to hit, 8 damage at a power level 8. Apply that to your power level, that's all you have to do. Let's talk about ranged tanks. They are more along the lines of ranged tanks. What they like to do is they like to take a lot of damage. But what they particularly like to do is stay at a range. But they will. But sometimes you can see mix in these, and they will. They, if they need to close distance, they will. Let's take someone like a Terminator for example. Everyone knows a Terminator. He sits there, takes a lot of damage, and he dishes it out back to them. But remember, a ranged tank is only as good as their toughness is and the amount of damage they can take. Now let's talk about affliction-based tanks. You don't see us often, but it is a possibility. Being super tough and trying to spread diseases, mind control. Tasing, I don't know. You can think of millions of afflictions out there. Simply put, an affliction is a debuff on someone. Now, let's go over different types of ways to keep your tank alive. There's just a straight up easy and simple option. Your toughness. Your toughness is going to be the backbone of everything. Keep yourself alive. But what if I don't want my toughness? What happens if I want to keep my character alive a different way? Well, congratulations, Jimmy. We're going to go over some of those ways you can actually keep your character alive. One of them is create armor with absorption. You go ahead and absorb the damage that you took, and you go ahead and put uh, create armor. Simply put, it's equal. It's it's extra ranks and protection. But remember, you cannot go up. You cannot go beyond beyond power level limits. In this case, and you may use trade off values. It may not. The point is, do not go past power level limits. You have to check out with the GM. But what happens if I want my tank to be also alive? I don't want to do that. Well, you can make your tank an insubstantial. Anywhere from a gelatinous form to a gaseous form to an energy form, or OC energy forms, or a insubstantial ghost form. Ghost form, which basically means incorporeal. Simply put, there's many ways to keep your tank alive. Now, what is the best tank to play? Simply and easily put, it's up to you as a player. But remember, this is only a crap guide to mutants and masterminds. This isn't really supposed to be a big theological discussion. Let's go over good supporting, good supporting um, skills to take with your tank. It depends on your build. You you could really go for perception, insight, uh, technology. I don't know, fucking no sleight of hand. It depends on the type of tank you are and your character's backstory. But remember, every single mutants and masterminds character. And this also follows for tanks. Is recommended to have one movement power, one attack power, one utility power, and one good skill. That's just general recommendations. This has been a crap guide to Dungeons and Dragons and uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Mutants and Masterminds, Mutants and Masterminds, and that is the tank.